I would like to introduce you our first speaker, uh, Ferdinando uh, and Rosa from Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Italy and also the young mapper, um, Barry. Yeah, they will in, um, tell us about um, uh, their project experience of introducing OSM in schools. So stage is yours. Thank you to be here. Uh, today I will present our project, OpenStreetMap in Schools, the case study of Bari. Bari is a city in the south of Italy. And uh, I am Rosa Colacicco, PhD student in uh, geosciences, in particular in geomorphology in Bari. And uh, I am uh, the president of uh, Youth Map at the Tunipa chapter. And uh, I am also the regional coordinator for OpenStreetMap uh, in Apulia, that is our region, Wikimedia Italy, that is the local chapter of uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation. This is my colleague, Ferdinando Traversa, that is a brilliant student and uh, the regional coordinator for Apulia, Wikimedia Italy. As I said, I'm the president of uh, YouthMapper at Tuniba chapter, that is a uh, that was born in April 2021, uh, so we have uh, only one uh, year of uh, activities, and uh, we are based at the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, uh, University of Bari. Uh, we are a group of uh, volunteer mappers, in particular we have a lot of students with different backgrounds, so different skills, and uh, uh, also researchers and PhD students. Uh, as you know, Youth Mappers is a global network of mappers, and uh, we are the second chapter in Italy after the Polymappers chapter. And uh, we strongly believe in the motto of uh, our network, that is, we don't just build maps, we build mappers, because we always try to engage, uh, in particular, students and uh, young people. Our activities are, of course, connected with sustainability, so with uh, sustainable development goals. And uh, in particular, uh, we can think about activities mapping uh, with the different aims, in particular the humanitarian. Uh, but we can think also about, for example, the goal number five, that is about gender equality, or the goal number 10, uh, reduce inequalities. And uh, in particular, the last one, that is uh, partnerships for uh, all the goals. And uh, this is the, maybe the topic of uh, our project, but uh, Ferdinando will give you more details about it. Um, hi everyone, thank you Rosa. Um, before starting to talk about the project, I just want to introduce some context. Uh, Wikimedia Italy has been bringing Wikimedia projects uh, into schools since 2005 with uh, our project, our theme Wikipedia, Wikipedia about Scuola, Wikipedia goes to school. And um, the organization has also started a series of call for projects, um, which gave grants to schools to organize projects with Wikimedia projects and also with OpenStreetMap, and that's what we did. Um, our project also was part of the um, mandatory internship scheme uh, that is in place in Italy, which forces students to complete uh, 90 hours um, 90 hours of internship with organizations, which could be businesses or, or uh, charities, like uh, Wikimedia Italy. And so part of the project was also part of this, we call it Italy, Alternanza Scuola Lavoro. Uh, Wikimedia Italy is also the chapter, not only for Wikimedia Foundation, but also for OpenStreetMap Foundation since 2016. And we work with youth mappers at, at Tuniba, uh, and yes, also because of that. So, what we did, um, we worked with Liceo Economico Sociale Bianchi Dottora, which is a high school in Italy, and uh, with 17 girls of a class aged between 17 and 18. And their course is pretty humanities oriented, so they study subjects like philosophy, uh, human sciences, and there is not much theme in their uh, course. So what we tried to, did, to do was also uh, to introduce a little bit of theme, to introduce them to science, uh, to geotechnologies, um, to IT, which is a thing that uh, school uh, had and done with them. Uh, the actual project. Uh, we worked with OpenStreetMap and also with other Wikimedia projects um, as part of this uh, cooperation that is in place in Italy with this uh, fact that 
Wikimedia Italy and OpenStreetMap Italy are basically the same. So we worked on OpenStreetMap and also Wikivoyage, Wikidata, and Wikimedia Commons. If you don't know these projects, I will introduce them um, in a few seconds. Uh, the project uh, consisted of 50, 35 hours in total. 10 hours were dedicated to an in-class course introduction to the basic principles of editing OpenStreetMap, of editing Wikimedia projects, uh, our core values, uh, the, all the questions relating to licenses, which is another thing that uh, is useful to know for students and that is uh, really uncommon. Um, then we worked uh, for 15 hours on field. We went mapping. We had field papers. And then, then 10 hours, the 10 final hours, were dedicated to the um, upload, upload of the data, data we gathered uh, on Wikimedia Project and on OpenStreetMap. Our main focus for this project, this was also uh, requested by the school, but uh, I think that uh, given also the connections with the agenda 2030, um, I think that we have also our, our take on this. Uh, the focus was, was on accessibility. Uh, we, mapped, we mapped ramps, we mapped the accessibility of facilities uh, all around our town. And uh, so this also helps students to have a different focus on uh, this type of questions. So you might now be asking, why should we work with OpenStreetMap at school? Um, I think that it's, it's proved that working with OpenStreetMap and also Wikimedia Project helps students develop a set of skills that um, may be useful to them in the future. Uh, now I'm making a reference to the European Union framework for competencies, uh, the key competence for, competencies for lifelong learning, um, published by the European Commission, and working with OpenStreetMap helps students develop their soft skills, also because we uh, made them work in groups. Uh, that, what, that is what the European Union calls personal social learning to learn competence. Uh, it enables, it helps them to um, develop their digital competence because we made them work with data, with geographical data, so they uh, learned how to use access, filter, evaluate, they had to um, make, make analysis, take decision, decisions based on the data they gathered and then they uploaded. And it, it was also an exercise of active citizen, citizenship because they um, effectively uh, uploaded data about their city, their town. Uh, and it was a bit of exchange between students and city because they uploaded data on their surroundings uh, and help the city because um, we all know that it is positive to have an um, increased amount of information about uh, towns in, in OpenStreetMap and in other Wikimedia projects. And they had to face complex, complexity, the complexity of our environment because um, interactions are uh, not out of the ordinary for Wikimedia projects for OpenStreetMap. They had to interact with other users. Um, it, it happened that someone sent them a message about their work, and they had to answer and justify their decisions. And why should we bring OpenStreetMap and Wikimedia projects together? Um, aside from the fact that Wikipedia and OpenStreetMap Italy are basically the same thing that <laughs> was a, a huge stimulus to, to do these things. But uh, both use free licenses. Um, OpenStreetMap has the OBDL. Wikimedia projects have the Creative Commons. Um, Data is shared and reached between Wikidata and OpenStreetMap. We will see how. Uh, and it benefits more the city because adding geographical data, historical data, data about uh, cultural heritage um, helps uh, and increases the visibility of uh, what the city, the town has to offer. Then it also broadens student horizons because uh, they had to work with multiple environments, they had to work with multiple tools, they had to work with geographical data, but then they had to also to write something in Italian and in English um, to increase their literacy skills. And I think that we all may agree that Wikimedia and OpenStreetMap share uh, common goals and values. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Wikimedia Italy wouldn't be sponsoring a state of the map here in Florence. So that, this is Wikivoyage. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know it, it's like a um, tourist guide, free tourist guide online, freely licensed, and uh, it works like Wikipedia, so it's freely editable by everyone. And Wikipedia has an integration with OpenStreetMap, obviously it uses maps from OpenStreetMap uh, with the Wikimedia uh, map, map style server. 
This is Wikimedia Commons. There is a, a direct link between Wikimedia Commons and OpenStreetMap, and it is a free digital archive of Wikimedia projects. It has more than, I think, 70 million uh, freely licensed files, images, videos, etc. And here is Wikidata. I think we all know it, uh, which is also geographical information, and it can be linked with OpenStreetMap. Uh, OpenStreetMap has a direct, direct link with Wikidata, has a direct link with Wikipedia. You can uh, add the tag Wikipedia with the article you are referring to, to, and there's also a direct link with Wikimedia Commons. Uh, so that's basically what we did. We linked uh, objects uh, in Bar. We added new objects. We added new listing of Wikivoyage. We added new um, items on Wikidata, and then we linked them together with OpenStreetMap objects that we added or we edited. I just want to share with you some images of the work we did uh, here in class when we taught students about uh, the principles and the, uh, the main features of OpenStreetMap. Then we went on field with field paper, and I think that we all had uh, a little bit of fun going around with maps and mapping everything. And then we inserted the data. This is a field paper we worked on. So now I give the floor to Rosa that we will explain uh, what is the outcome of this entire project. Thank you. The outcome, as uh, you can see, uh, is about changes and changes that girls did. And uh, in particular, they uh, did uh, the changes in, uh, with the ID editor that is more simple for them. And also, they used Street Complete that is very simple and uh, maybe you can say funny because um, it's a kind of gaming app for, um, uh, in order to do some changes in OpenStreetMap. So it's very simple. And uh, in particular, uh, we did uh, about 40 edits on uh, Wikivoyage, seven uh, Wikidata items, and about 20 images on uh, Wikicommons. Results. Uh, in particular, we can talk about the improvement of the girls' students' digital skills. That is very important for them because they study uh, different uh, subjects in school. And of course, uh, the technical improvement or, uh, of data um, of Bari uh, on multiple sources, as Ferdinando said. Uh, we can talk also about the different point of view uh, for uh, girls, uh, both on STEAM and uh, also on the uh, accessibility issue that, for example, could be in town about uh, different facilities. And uh, I can say also for us, because uh, of course we learn a lot from girls, and uh, I can say also from uh, each other. So I would like to thank you for being here, and uh, if you want, you can send emails, and this is our email address, and uh, you can uh, spoke with us. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Maybe I will uh, first have a question for you guys. Uh, I think it's a really great idea of bringing this uh, to the uh, students, uh, especially in the uh, in the school. Uh, my first question is uh, why the your audience, the students, is all female? Uh, is, is there any uh, specific uh, considerations of uh, involving only girls? Uh, uh, that was a, a case. <laughs> that, okay. that was a, a case because um, the class we worked with, uh, that's a school, the Liceo Economico Sociale in Italy is a school that mainly attracts female uh, for a series of reasons that are uh, mostly <laughs> um, unknown to, to me. And that was just the case. The school worked, wanted that we work with that specific class, and um, they were all female. OK. Uh, and I also have a follow-up question. Uh, like, uh, since uh, uh, it's uh, uh, only the teenagers using this OpenStreetMap, uh, what is your experience of the gamification of all the tools that you currently have? Because it can easily imagine that compared with TikTok, sometimes like mapping is boring. So uh, have you any comments or um, like ideas? How can we really improve the gamification part of the mapping and to facilitate even in the better to let the students more interested or uh, easily, more easily mapped uh, in their city. So do you have any experience of uh, the current gamification factors in the uh, tools that you used for your project? 
Um, so I have to say that there was one particular student who had a lot of fun using Street Complete going around the city uh, because she immediately uh, saw the, the result of her work with uh, all the statistics and uh, the badges that arrived. So she was very happy and proud of what she were doing with Street Complete. And um, uh, yeah, all, having a, your uh, contributions published uh, gives a sense of accomplishment of its own. So they could see and they can actually see that what they did is online and is useful and is used by people, can be used. Um, and uh, if you search Barry on OpenStreetMap or on Wikivoyage uh, or Wikimedia Commons, you can see their, their photos, their uh, contributions to OpenStreetMap or their contributions to Wikimedia Project. Uh, but maybe uh, it would be even better uh, to have a, a direct account of contributions or views, page views, um, that would uh, be even more uh, more useful to um, make students see what they did and the impact of what they are doing. Uh, and they, they have to understand, and we try to make them understand that what they were, they were doing have a big impact on the global scale. The teacher, the teacher, um, especially one of the teachers who believe in this project, were aware of this. And we try to uh, make also the students aware of these things. Excellent. Uh, any questions from the audience? This is absolutely brilliant. Really, really um, uh, encouraging project. Really good to see this. Um, uh, and my wife's a teacher, so I'm going to be going home and suggesting that she could do something like this with her classes. Um, did you have any issues around child safety, around safeguarding with exposing basically kids to an online community and any any particular things you had to take note of there? Uh, so that of 17, 18 uh, is an age that um, is pretty safe to work with. Um, but we also worked with um, a middle school with kids that were uh, a little younger. So I, I sense that uh, there, there would be con concern about uh, data uh, and privacy. And, um, I think that uh, there isn't much harmful interactions on OpenStreetMap and Wikivoyage uh, and Wikimedia projects because it's a controlled environment. So the message you uh, receive as a student are, uh, by people who are experts of the project and would never insult you or uh, try to get um, data for other harmful purposes. Uh, I think that social media are way more a huge risk and uh, students also um, that are younger than the uh, age which is appropriate for social media uh, use them uh, every day. So, um, I think that OpenStreetMap and other platforms like that are the um, the, min, the, the really the uh, minimum risk they they can they can have. That's really positive. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, there is also a question down there. Yeah, thank you for uh, your presentation. Really very interesting because uh, in uh, OpenStreetMap Uganda, we also have such a project uh, called OpenStreetMap in Schools. So similar, but the context is really very different. So uh, we go to schools and there isn't anyone with a computer. Or the kids don't have even a smartphone. Um, of course, we, we take computers to them um, that we try to use to uh, teach them how to use OpenStreetMap, but sometimes even the internet doesn't exist in some of the schools, so it's really uh, uh, very difficult. Uh, but my question is, um, what do you do around uh, data quality? Um, like when these uh, your students contribute, do you have like also a process for uh, validation? Um, and also the other thing is, uh, do you know if there is any solution for uh, like something that can be used offline? Um, like when you go to teach uh, OpenStreetMap in a location that doesn't have internet, uh, is there any way to have like maybe the data offline and even the image and have people like, you know, try it out, but uh, 
try to overcome that barrier. I don't. I know it's a challenge you haven't faced, but any thoughts you can give that would be helpful. Thank you. Uh, so as regards validation, um, we actually manual, manually validated all the, the edits they uh, made, both on OpenStreetMap and Wikimedia Project. We actually were there when they were made in the edits, so we um, checked them one by one and assured that the data they were inserting was uh, quality data. And uh, we also checked them also. They uploaded the changes on OpenStreetMap or um, saved the edits on Wikimedia projects. So uh, there was a bit of manual work from our side that for, to assure that everything was uh, as it should be. Um, as regards offline work, uh, we worked with field papers when we went on the um, on field activities. And I think that uh, it's a fun and effective way to work, to gather data. Uh, then go in a place which has internet connection, the minimum internet connection uh, needed for this activity. And, and to say that um, internet in Italian schools has improved, has improved a lot in the last years, but there are still a lot of schools in Italy which suffer from connection problems. Uh, the pandemic showed that. Uh, so uh, I think that offline tools like field papers could be useful also here in Italy. Great. Uh, there is also a question from the venue list. Uh, and the audience asks, how many students have participated so far in your project? 17? Uh, 17 for this particular project, 17 students. Then we had other projects uh, and other schools and, uh, and other projects only with Wikimedia, other projects only with OpenStreetMap in other classes. But this particular project, uh, I've seen uh, 17 participants. That's cool. Uh, I think we got still time for a short question. One more, maybe. You guys still have questions? Yeah? Then, uh, otherwise, thank you very much, Fernando. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rosa. <laughs>